Major is one of the two tent poles of baseball anime, having legions of fans and high mal scores for each of its six seasons. Much of the show's appeal comes from the gameplay aspect of the story, which doesn't delve too much into strategy and is very accessible to someone watching who may not be familiar with the game. But every baseball anime has at least one quote-unquote smarter than you scene to pay fan service to the baseball nerds. And though it takes Major 151 episodes to get to that point, we do eventually get to it. So here's the situation, with a few spoilers ahead. Our hometown Indiana Hornets are down two runs in the bottom of the ninth inning in a one-game playoff to decide who takes the final playoff spot. Our catcher Jeff Keen steps to the plate with one out and a runner on first. Down 0-2 in the count, Keen hits a sharp comebacker to the pitcher, only to see the ball ricochet back towards home plate and beyond the catcher's box. The umpire immediately calls it foul, to the shock of the Hornets bench. Goro and a Manny Ramirez type ask why the ball was called foul, to which the coaches explain that since the ball caromed off the pitcher's rubber and not the pitcher, it would be treated just like any other ball that started fair within the infield and rolled foul. Because according to the rules, the rubber is a rock. But that's not where this wacky plate appearance ends. Keen drives the next pitch down the right field line. The right fielder leaps in front of the foul pole and seems to knock the ball down. After he gathers the ball, he sends a throw to the cutoff man, who executes a perfect relay throw to home plate to get the lead runner out. But the manager immediately rises from the bench and claims the hit was a home run, imploring the umpires to check the video. The umpires go to the video to see if the ball had touched the pole after touching the fielder's glove, which would indeed make the hit a home run. The slow-mo replay is, of course, inconclusive, and the umpires decide that there isn't enough evidence to reverse the call. When the manager suggests the umpires check the poll for marks, they reply that even if there were marks on the poll, they couldn't be sure whether the marks were freshly made from Keen's hit or from a previous scuffing. But then who else but our hero Goto looks at the offending ball from the dugout, notices a yellow mark, and asks the umpires to investigate. They gawk at the stain and award Keen his deserved home run, tying the game in the bottom of the ninth. So I have some problems with this play. And they're not logic-based, surprisingly. Trust me, I tried to find some holes that would make this play unfeasible, but it's pretty airtight. According to the official MLB rulebook, a comment on MLB Rule 2.00 states that a batted ball not touched by a fielder which hits the pitcher's rubber and rebounds into fair territory between home and first or between home and third base is a foul ball. I've never seen this happen in a game, and the odds of it happening are pretty slim, but it's not an unrealistic play. And they also got the home run call right, as any ball that leaves the park in fair territory without first hitting the field of play is considered a home run, even if it touches a player or their equipment. Sure, this might also seem kind of unrealistic, but those are the rules. You gotta be prepared for any situation, and kudos to the writers for knowing these possibilities. No, the problem I had with this scene, and with Major in general, was not in its logic, but in its delivery. Major constantly breaks the fundamental principle of show, don't tell, and this episode perfectly demonstrates why in-universe commentary on the plot makes for ineffective storytelling. To Major's defense, this isn't a case of bad writing or even a bad story, but just the reality of having to relay the details of a really complicated game to an audience made up of many non-baseball fans. Major started out as a kid's show and grew with its audience, but as Goro leveled up to different stages of his career, the show had to introduce an entirely new baseball world to its audience season after season. This forced the show to spend much of its time explaining the intricacies of Japanese high school baseball, the American minor league system, the World Baseball Classic, and eventually the top level of Major League Baseball. That's a lot to explain to the section of the audience that knew just as much about baseball as Shimizu did in season 1. As an example, early on in this particular episode, the stakes get raised on an already high leverage game when we discover that another team's victory clinched them the wildcard spot, making this game to decide the division winner a de facto play-in game for the Hornets and the Coyotes. I understand the implication of MLB's wildcard system circa 2010, but the show can't assume that its audience does. So to address the problem, it introduces a throwaway character whose only purpose is to ask her boyfriend what a wildcard is. And then, we pretty much never see her again. It's a necessary tool to explain a weird concept, but it's also one that halts the momentum of the story and patronizes those of us who already know what's going on. 
Later on, when Keen hits the foul ball off the pitcher's mound, Goro and the Manny Ramirez type have to ask what just happened, just like many a viewer would. And once again, the story halts to have the coach explain to us that the rubber is a rock and the ball is foul. It is once again a necessary explanation because I doubt there were many people watching that scene for the first time knowing that the rubber is a rock. I didn't even know that the rubber is a rock. But I also don't think it was worth the halted momentum just to show off some back of the rulebook knowledge. The home run that follows continues on the same narrative pattern as the foul ball. Play happens, confusion abounds, higher authority explains what just occurred. Only this time, Goto once again gets to be the hero by using his eagle eye to see yellow scuffs on a white baseball a hundred feet away from the scene. On paper, it all adds up to a pretty fascinating situation, but it's the starts and the stops and explainers that drag what should have been a great climax to this show. Instead, it just feels like the rest of Major, constantly telling us what just happened instead of showing us a good story. And trust me, the irony of overanalyzing something is not lost on me. So let's talk about a show that did this better. Touch also has one of these smarter than you scenes in its penultimate episode. I gushed about it in an earlier video I'll link below, but the short of it is our hero Tatsuya steals home plate during an intentional walk on the top of the 10th to give his team the lead in the regional final. It's a bonkers play that would never happen in real life that still makes sense in the context of the show. The brilliance of the scene is that it works not only as something to geek out over, but also as an effective climax to the episode. You don't need to know baseball to understand that something cool just happened, because Touch uses imagery, symbolism, and music to capture the stakes of the moment. It doesn't explain that Tatsuya couldn't have stolen home if the pitcher was right-handed, or if Gotoro hadn't swung earlier in the plate appearance, or if the catcher didn't ask for the pitch to the left of home plate, or that literally no one ever steals home during an intentional walk. Because it doesn't need to. But if you happen to catch any of these details, it adds a little extra flair to the dramatic. Touch can get away with not explaining the baseball because Touch's central story revolves not around baseball, but around the relationship between Minami and the Uesugi twins. Major, however, is a story about Goro's baseball journey, and in order for us to understand the show, we need to understand at least the fundamentals of the game we're watching. And since baseball is a very complicated game, Major takes a long time to tell us what's going on. That doesn't make Keen Strange at Bat a bad scene. It truly is a smarter than you scene, both in its thorough knowledge of the rulebook and how it understands how everyone involved would react to the scenario. If only it was able to just show us what happened, it would have made for a more effective climax. But by telling us what happened, we get a smart play made far less cool than what it could have been. 